Hey guys, Poop Line Way back. I'm Aaron. I'm Melanie. And we are here with uh, October series, as we've been doing, but Mike Flanagan always has these coming out on Netflix late in October, so we're always a season behind, so. Eh, a we're, year. So we're doing last year's Midnight Club. Not Midnight Club, Aaron. We are not racing. It's the Midnight Club. I like that racing game. Um, last year we did Midnight Mass. None of these have really been connected or anything, so Except I don't... for actors, there's been actors in both. Yeah, but they're different characters, so there's not really a connection with any of that kind of stuff. Um, I don't really know much about this one. So I don't know anything about it. I really don't have a whole like, lot to at go least into. Midnight Mass had Mass at the end, so you're like, oh, it's gonna be churchy. Club? Babysitter's Club? Yeah, that's what we do, so. Or I mean, Fight Club, we just don't speak about this. We'll, we'll find out. So, uh, Throughout the series, we are going to have full length available as well as uh, early access, which you can find at patreon.com slash blindwave or blindwave.com. We have our new website up where we also have our new Beyond available there. So you can check out all that in the description below. And with this being the first of the series, full length is available for everybody, whether you're subscribed to any of that or not. So just make sure you check that out. You can also find that in the description and probably the pinned comment. So... That's all. We're going to get started and see how scared Melanie gets. No. Oh, That's my favorite part of this. I hate you. The next chapter. It's like. That's something people say 90s? a lot. Sounds like hey, it is. The next chapter. Like it's already been written. Oh. Like That's a lot of blood. Already there waiting for us. Oh, oh it's hair dying. dye. But Good color. I disagree. What? We are the authors of our <clears throat> own stories. Sure, we This sounds like Babysitter's Club, though. Ah, like a we were in valedictorian. High yeah, speech. You have your best go of it. Salutatorian means second best. Oh. oh. Holy shit, you did it. The red looks badass. Yeah, it does. Where's Josie? Uh, she chickened out, and I kind of get it. What if they don't let us in? I Lauren, mean, this is our chance to get a jump on a real college party. Or we could start with a high school one, since we kind of missed that boat when we were being total nerds. Uh, fuck high school. <laughs> Sam encouraged her to go to this party? To break a rule for the first time in her life, I guess. Huh? You go here? You look a little young. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good response. <laughs> Pissing yourself or are you winding down? Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for my friend. She's busy. I think she's trying to make a couple mistakes. <laughs> a couple mistakes. My favorite is Shelly. Mary, not her husband. <clears throat> Mary Shelly, the teenage girl. I say Frankenstein? Frankenstein? Yeah, the Mary Shelly. The teenage Shelley. girl did that. She was, she was 19 when she became the mother of modern horror. I mean, she, she wrote the first major work in the science fiction genre. Frankenstein is not only the first creation story to use science that way, but to deal with the ethics of experiment and experimenter. She's brilliant. <laughs> so that's, that's why I went with Shakespeare for my thesis. I, I tend to ramble when I get going on Shelley. Huh. Jesus. Where have you been all semester? Uh, so, so tell me about you. What are some of your favorite? <coughs> oh no. Excuse me. Here. Huh. Unless she has a medical condition, but she seems like she's freaking out. Like it's. Ah! That's like a fuck. <laughs> That's a medical condition. What's this one called? It's called a hallucination, Aaron. Hopefully she did not hit her head. Lanka, did you hear me? Sorry, I was just, um, I'm sorry, I'm just distracted. Can you say the name again? Like the name, can you say the real name again, please? Papillary thyroid carcinoma. Cancer of the thyroid? Right. Thyroid cancer. Uh, you said treatable? It can be. We need to know more. But the biopsy results tell me we should do an immediate thyroidectomy and start you on radioactive iodine treatment. Removing your thyroid? Yeah. Thyroid? 
No, I'm, I'm going to Stanford. <clears throat> That's like a hormone thing too, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes it takes out the parathyroid as well. I was in the top two tenths of one percent. Jeez. I'm good with odds. I got this. They can't be lit well, in the hospital. Hospitals aren't exactly in love with open flames. <laughs> so. Okay. Yay! <laughs> Happy birthday, kiddo. Don't you have an install today? That's, uh, no, this, this is more important. Don't lose another job for me. This is more important. Another job? How is it? Foster dad is my only friend. But there is an orderly that has the hots for me, though. <laughs> is he cute? Ugh, I'd rather die. Mm. So, I win. Look, I gotta go, but. Oh, uh, cool. Thanks for calling. It means a lot. Happy birthday, and. Uh... <sighs> the tumors in her lungs didn't respond, <clears throat> Tumors on our lungs. It's red. Here again, another round. Another round isn't going to make a difference at this point. Huh. Yeah, so you're saying, you're saying she's terminal. Yes. No. <sighs> How long? It's tough to say. It's tough to fucking hear too, Doc. I tried. <laughs> She's worked at that time. She's 18 years old today. Could she make it to 19? Yes, she could. It's possible. Yes. And, uh, 20? Not likely. Damn it! I didn't know it needed tissues for her. First episode. <clears throat> <clears throat> She's getting on the internet. <laughs> In the nineties. Hang on, hang on. Dial up. <laughs> Look at the computer. <laughs> Place for terminal teenagers to transition on their own terms. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know what this is. Oh, they're heading to turn all the way around, Melanie. It's not. Stop being right. It's not being right. I've seen enough horror movies. All right, I'm gonna stop jumping. I'm just jumping to be friends with you. Hey, Flanagan, like they make you freaking cry and scare the poop out of you. I know, right? Medical miracle. <sighs> Suddenly confronted with the prospect of dying. Man, I should have read past it. Yeah. Claims her cancer has been cured, 17. Lump on her neck. And the kids on their own, it's a place for teenagers to transition on their own terms. This means no more treatments, no more trials, no more None idiot. of that's working. Maggie, I promised Maggie that I would take care of you. And you did. Sorry. You did so good. Oh. I hate this show. I hate kids and TV shows. She's 18. She's an adult. <laughs> she wasn't at the beginning of the show. 
Get him. Alright. I saw a face. I'm not gonna say anything. I wanna see if you see a face. You're gonna be like, what are you talking about? And I'm not gonna say any more. Now you're just confused. I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Do, do I know you? Yeah. The kid I at the party? So. You went to Franklin High, right? Mm -hmm. Or you were a, a patient at Seattle General? No. I'm from Sacramento. Weird. No, I've never been. Uh, what are you in for? Papillary thyroid carcinoma with lung metastasis. So, um, thyroid cancer, I guess. Leukemia. I guess. It's nice to meet you. Should I just call you thyroid cancer? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, um, Alanka. Everything okay, sweetie? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. This is, um, leukemia. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Kevin. <clears throat> Tim, well, should we go check out the inside, see what all the fuss is about? Yeah. I mean, he seems like he's happy. Oh, uh, well, I'll, I'll see you around. Maybe. I mean, yeah. I'll be here. Leukemia of the lungs? Anyway. Which, which one's leukemia? Uh, it's just right? all blood. Yeah, all blood? Break, Your leukocytes. It's, um... It's... <laughs> Told you I was gonna jump. I find it funnier if I don't move and you freak out. <laughs> Welcome back, Miss Pollard. There's gonna be a lot of censoring beeps in this. I'm Dr. Georgina Stanton. Welcome to Reckless. I like her. Georgina? Yep. It's one of those fake things you're supposed to like her, and wow. she's the one that's causing the mess. You don't recognize her. She's Nancy in Nightmare on Street. Really? Trust me. Yeah. I know. How did you recognize her? Because exactly that's her. When I lost <laughs> I've also watched the behind the scenes Freddy Krueger <laughs> making video on Netflix. Every living day here is a win. You and I can talk a little more, Tim, if you'd like. Poor Tim. Maybe he just looks so sad, but trying to like, not be. Yeah. <laughs> Stick to it and don't get lost. Like a labyrinth in here. I like Vegas. They don't want you to know what time it is, and they don't want you to get out. Which is <laughs> Seth? Awesome 66 on. Spencer. All of them gone. Spence. Group therapy will be in here. <clears throat> Bunch of therapies, actually. These two are doing some new agey thing called a yoga. New agey <laughs> In the 90s, I guess I've been yeah. here then, huh? That's nasty. I'll wait till you see what's next. <gasps> Pinball? Whoa, Street Fighter pinball, Doctor Who pinball. <laughs> no go. What's the yeah. other side? Real blood stoma. Oh, because then died. Huh. I'm Alanka. Alanka, hi. I'm so, so glad I'm not the new kid anymore. Welcome. This is an excellent day for me. <laughs> Mesh has been here uh, two months. Two months, and I think he's been two months of the new kid jokes. The constant hazing. I don't even know what the call is. This is not hazing, but he keeps bringing it up. He keeps asking us when the hazing starts, and we keep telling him this isn't a frat house. I mean, I don't get to go to college. I don't think I'm asking for much. Could have at least tried to do some hazing. <laughs> I mean, I I just wanted them to do the hazing. Lydia's all yours. You've got some old elevators. I've only ever seen these in movies. Just the one. Only you want to take a ride? Just, movies. Just Dude, I send an elevator in our house. Where would it go? Only one bed. Do not use your bedpan. Uh, they're in every room for some reason, Two and they really don't want you to use it unless you. Let's go. Well, they're apparently decorative, is what I'm saying. <laughs> decorative <laughs> bedpans. Oh, he pulled them out. She actually reminded me a little Megan. I'm supposed to be dropping you off at college, not this. Well, it's not too much of a stretch. Some serious Ivy League vibes here. <laughs> Just think about it that way, if it helps. <sighs> I don't know if I could drop off my dying kid and just leave them. <laughs> oh, is that... 
Maggie. And like her boyfriend, maybe? Boyfriend was Tim. Oh, look at that. Is that a pentagram? <clears throat> under the bed? It was a star with a circle around it. <sighs> Is it under all the beds? What you doing? Oh. What you doing? Sorry, there's a... I'm Luca. Thyroid cancer. With, uh... With lung metastasis. You're Anya, yeah? Yeah. You gonna read all those? Yeah. I was supposed to start college in the fall. Trying to keep up with my syllabus. Shut up. So, there's, uh... There's weird symbols under my bed. And chalk. Yeah? Do you, uh... Do you know why? I doubt Rachel? she did that. <laughs> I expect. Rachel. Roommate Rachel. She was super into Wiccan stuff. Mm. All the last roommate. The end. Well, we all need something, right? Yeah. Towards the end. 10 grams of morphine for me. Well, I, I get it. Not necessarily like Wicca, but there's something to magical thinking. Yeah. But it sure didn't work for Rachel. Bitch is dead. But hey, why not leave him there? Go for double jeopardy. Where the scores can really change. Well, it was great to uh, I was wondering why that door had like a... And stayed a, open? A, well, a thing on the top. I saw it whenever Tim came in. How long have you all been here? About four months for me. Five. Three. Three. 63 days, 17 hours, and 11 minutes. You don't know the minutes. Sandra and Anya are the same. <laughs> you don't know the minutes. This is a hospice? My parents told me this was a boarding school. They wouldn't really throw you out, Dr. Mm -hmm. Sam. Wouldn't throw us out. Just because it's got a morgue in the basement doesn't mean it's not a business. So, how <laughs> did you end up here? I sort of found Brightcliff on my own. I sent an application, did an interview with Stan over the phone, and said there was an opening. That opening was Rachel, I guess. Hmm, I didn't really get to know Rachel. She was in full cranky-ass bitch mode by the time you got here. And the whole witchcraft thing? If cancer didn't take her out, someone was going to drop a house on her. I think... <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Rachel is a Wiccan. If she was a heretic, I'm going straight to hell. Only God knows what's in someone's heart in the end, and I like to think he'll find yours is way more full of love than you live on. Oh, yeah? Oh, no. Rachel was going to bore you. <laughs> Dark towards the end. I didn't tell you guys the weird shit she was saying. She said that she could feel something following her. Like a living shadow. And every time she turned around, gone. Can't scare me, Anya. The night before she died, she came running into our room. I don't know how she ran at all. She was in real bad shape by then. She said it almost got her that time. That she could feel its fingers touching her shirt. But it was that close. And she cried and cried and she said she knew that she wouldn't be able to escape it. Not again. Hmm. And the next Again? day she died. Why did you do that? Feel what? It's scary enough without that. We've got nothing to fear, right? I mean, we've got Jesus on your side. Sandra, you know what it is. The drugs do a number. You gotta take what people say with a grain of salt. When people see ghosts, hear voices. I've heard three or four versions of that living shadow story since I got here. She was tripping balls. Three or four versions of that story, huh? It's not just Rachel's. Why are they all asleep? Nope, dead. Gotcha. She went in the elevator? Hmm. She was asleep. Oh, this is the table that Besides, she had in the vision. Sure, made her. Hey, well, you said that about me. And I was right. Half your stories are just old episodes of Doctor Who. Hmm, so do they just get around and tell stories? Mm -hmm. So now? It's like, are you afraid of the dark? <laughs> He's hearing it on the wind. Your lawn could probably be great at this. Can't recognize the street. True, can't she can't is a these storyteller. But he made this walk every day. It was muscle memory time. This is cool, we could jump to like another kind of... It didn't make sense. And then, that same melody 
So familiar, like he knew every note that he was about to hear. So, so familiar. Then he feels himself being watched. Not from the street. The street's empty. No, the windows. All of them, every single window framing a face, like a portrait gallery, all smiling, all watching him. He should run, he thinks. Run back the way he came. But the music is bad. It's in his ear. It's in his head. And then another sound. I'm I don't know who I am. I, I don't know who I am. Can you just point me to Are you lost? And get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd she go? It's a story. It's a story. The whole thing's a story, Melanie. The whole thing's a story. The show's a story. But this is a jump scare. <laughs> Wait. Don't be lazy. You scared? Startled isn't the same as scared. Anyone can bang pots and pans behind someone's head. That's not scary. It's just startling. And it's lazy as fuck. Maybe. But when that happens, it actually releases first adrenaline and so <laughs> <laughs> oh, take what I do to you. <laughs> I love it. It's always behind you. Isn't that the name of a <laughs> Jeez, that was the sun him! <laughs> it still wasn't where he was looking. Run, Where'd her eyeballs go? I know, she has like this grudge kind of look about her because of like the hair, the white eyes. It's the, uh, what's the spirit? The Japanese spirit, I can't think what it's called. It's a Fuck! Oh, it was Come a cat. Did you just <laughs> fucking black cat scare us? You do that first, not at the end. You're right. The point is, Except for that harmless cat, the street was empty. You remember what that teacher had said? How she tried to warn him about that melody. What she said about how some music finds its way into your head. How you can't stop yourself from hearing it once you've heard it. How it plays on and on. And how she tried to. <laughs> <laughs> You do too many jump scares, it just... The fuck was that? <laughs> well, shit, new girl. Might as well come out. Fuck. <clears throat> you weren't asleep. I thought no one was allowed out at night. We're not. So? What is this? It's kind of a club. Shh. Give me the wine. Take a sip. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I take. A she's worried that she's gonna tell them, them and they won't be able to do it. Mm -hmm. You're on to see the men if and what? Hello? You can have a sip. Drink the contraband, and maybe you're in the club. Forget about it, otherwise, nobody rides for free. Oh, come on. She's here already. At this point, she's either a member of the club or a witness for the prosecution. The Midnight Club. I'm not sure if that's what they called it originally, but that's what it was called when I got here. So, hmm. you guys sneak into the library every night and make ghosts. This is the library? Tell stories. Yeah. Make ghosts sounds way better. You tell a story, you're giving birth to a new ghost because that's all any of us are in the end. Stories. Hmm. There's actually more to the club than just the stories. One pretty huge thing, actually. Hey! She hasn't had any wine. What? She hasn't told a single story, so yeah. You want to be in the club? <clears throat> Ante up. Tell a story right now and drink the fuck up. Like I said before, nobody writes for free. 
Well, actually, it's free. Oh, it's for free. Cherie <laughs> mm -hmm. hasn't told a single story yet. And it's been three months. I'm working on it. Still editing. Fixing it in post. That's what my dad says all the time. He's a famous movie producer. Cherie's full of goddamn stories. Just never in the club. Hmm. But other than Cherie, nobody rides for free. Stories about a young woman who found out she was dying. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Boring. We try not to do that here. It's a little masturbatory. Wait, it's not what you think. Her name was Julia Jane, and she was born in 1951 in Lewiston, Idaho. And she wound up at a hospice. I wonder if it's like the true story of that girl that Private. lived. Oh, hospice. true. To wait it out. Kind of looks like her, right? Her tumors started to shrink. And then, somehow, they disappeared. 0914-1970-1125-1971. Everyone's Julia. death date? The doctor wants to see you. 0206-1989. Hmm. 02061989. 06, mm hmm. She reminds me of Max. Oh, I can see that a little. What happened her? There's more to the club, you said. One pretty huge thing, you said. Yeah, I'll tell you there's a story. Yeah. What is it? Tell me, and maybe I'll finish that story. I like it. Okay, newbie. There's an agreement of sorts. Like a pact. Goes back to the start of the club whenever that was. We're not just telling stories here. One of us sitting at this table is gonna die first. And soon, probably. I hate it when you say that. First one of us to croak has a major job to do. A responsibility of sorts to do everything they can to reach out from the other side tell the others what to expect no so is that so, why they're seeing all sorts of crazy has things shown up? anyone gotten you know a sign oh well, yeah we have proof of the afterlife happened a couple of weeks ago now we just meet out of habit i mean i have I've seen a sign. No, you're not. So you guys are thinking about the this girl thing. who cries wolf. What happens after death? You don't even know where you're standing. There's so many stories about this place. This exact house, in fact. Stories about people who thought they were gonna die but did it. Yeah, I could tell you those stories. Stories for another night, if you'll have me. I'll even do your pact. If it's me, if I'm the first to go, I will stand against that veil and I will push and scream and wail until you hear me. Mm. And I will scream the truth. I promise. You don't have to be such a drama queen about it. I hope that's not like foreshadowing. I'm sure it is, Aaron. I, I'm gonna stay a bit. Take a good look, like you said. Spend a quiet minute with these kids. Okay. Alone. Good night. Good night, Kevin. Love you. Ah, oh, sure you do. Thank you for watching this with me. Very nice of you. Anything to oblige. All right. So these are all just people from the other side, just trying to prove what happens on the other side. Sure. Or a, a 
witch surviving the by pact. the life that nope. these kids could never nope. fulfill. No. Fulfilling the pact. Why did you jump at the shadow? Because <laughs> I was just trying to prepare myself there. Ah, what would you think of the first episode? I was not expecting to cry as much as I did. I mean, we what? watched Haunting of Hill House and I stuff. I know, but these are characters that we have not met yet, Aaron. These are characters that we are not attached to yet. Like, you put a freaking child in, and you give them cancer, and put them in hospice care because they're terminal. That's pretty freaking depressing. I mean, you gotta take your hero, and you have to have them dropped and beaten and all that stuff so you can feel for their growth and everything too so like we're already invested in Alanka because of just the first 15 minutes. Just because minutes. she's a child. I mean I guess so. It, it's that idea too of like the the life that she's expecting and wanting and then she's like being robbed of that too and then we relate differently because we're looking at Tim who it's not really his daughter but right. he is there been taking care of her made a promise to Maggie and everything and clearly cares for her and everything and it, it, for for I think for me, like seeing him trying to like keep a nice strong wall while like you know, and it's yeah. so sad. It's so sad. I think that's what gets me more is like seeing like seeing like the parents and stuff and that like dropping your kid off and then just leaving. You I know, mean, like what do you? What, I guess gotta be hard to I'm do. always watching it from a mom's POV. Like if this was my own child, if I was doing all of this. Like, that's the POV I always watch it from. Gotcha. Yes, I understand, like, from uh, Ilanka's POV. It is horrible. And then you get to the point where, like, you're just kind of calloused by all of it. Yeah. So I understand that. But, yeah, what makes me cry is from being the mom POV. Yeah, For I sure. get you there. But then I was also really excited for... Uh, I think it's Heather L- Langkamp. L- Lang- I, don't, I don't know how you say her last name. Um, Nancy. But yeah, she was the the heroine. The of receptor of the <laughs> over the phone. Langenkamp, I think is how you say it. I'm sorry, I don't remember her face very well. <laughs> it's just cool to have because we also have had like. In other horror types of movies and stuff, kind of like a legacy casting cameo kind of thing. Like, this isn't Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, Wednesday. Sure, yeah. Like, But that one's more legacy casting because you're bringing a previous Wednesday in Wednesday. Gotcha, yeah. But uh, uh, Stranger Things has brought in characters that have been played by people from known horror genres and stuff, too. And having those kind of elements and stuff is just really cool to be like, oh, I remember them from this. So I just thought it was really cool to have Heather there. I guess from someone that actually enjoys watching those types of movies, I can understand the enjoyment that you might see of seeing a cameo like that. I suppose. Also, guys, make sure that you're subscribing because uh, we're going to be having another horror movie time frame. It comes out every Friday, so we're going to have horror movies for that. But we're going to do another one that Melanie and Eric haven't seen like they did with Nightmare on Elm Street, and I'm excited for that one as well. Hey, I'm so excited. It'd be great. How much alcohol am I allowed to have? Alcohol? Why? (laughs) Does that make it better or worse, though? I don't know. (laughs) I'm curious on basement. Like, the basement is the morgue. Like, is that a true thing? Have they been there to visit it before? Yeah, I don't know. Or if they've just been told. Yeah. Because, like, they know that they have some of the teens that die. Where would they take them? To the basement. That makes sense. Sure. You take them there to the morgue. You have them there until someone comes to pick them up kind of thing. Right. Right. But, like, if it's true that this Jane person went down to the basement, or did she just leave? Well, they just said that she disappeared, right? But then she said that she was inside the house the entire time. Sure. If we are to believe that. But if she went down to the basement, like, what happened in the basement? Is she a, Was she possessed? Like, is this know. something else living inside of her? I don't know. And then also, she cured I, because she died and came back to life. <laughs> and then, like, she added the element of, like, now she knows when people die kind yeah. of thing. So I don't think that part's the true part. But I'm trying to think, like, we had the the pentagram thing underneath the bed, yeah. which they said was because of the, the Wiccan uh, lady, Rachel. Rachel, from before. Um, 
which that may be important, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but like you said, is it? Are we seeing people trying to continue the pact? So this place is haunted because these spirits are trying to reach out from the other side yeah. and be like, "Hey, look." So maybe they're not out of malice at all. Sure. They're trying to do what they promised that they were going to do, but it freaks the hell out. <laughs> but why are they? Why was there visions for Alanka before she even came here and stuff? What was yeah. that thing in the mirror? Why was that there? Is there also some kind of like? Summoning is it a witchy thing that's going on, and that's why the Wiccan stuff was maybe keeping it at bay for a while. Like maybe some like, like what's the old lady? Is it Heather or someone else who is like thriving on like the life not lived, you know, kind of idea to keep themselves alive and stuff? Or maybe for... it was the old lady is like Jane. Yeah, it could be her. Because, like, maybe she died of an old age, and then she's trying to withhold the pact that she made because she was probably one of the people of the Midnight Club. Maybe. So um, maybe that's her trying to come back. But no. I, with, or this witch lady takes the place of people that miraculously Maybe. Survive. But with Alonka seeing something before she even came to the house, before she was mm-hmm. even terminal, like, it made me think that this was all in her head. Until they started talking about at the house, other people have been trying to fight stuff off too. And, uh, my thought is that there's like a, it's someone or something doing things and that's kind of summoning her here. Like is trying to reach out to her and she's getting crazy visions and then like because of the process she finds this place mm-hmm. because of whatever they're doing. Right. But I don't know why they're getting visions, I don't know. Because it's following the exact same... Um, diagnosis that this Jane person had. So it set her directly to the path to this house, which is... What, what's the house called again? Hospice House. I don't know. It's like Bridgewood. Oh, Brightwood? <laughs> right? Something? I don't know. But anyway... Cliff? Yes. Bright Brighton Cliff? Cl- Brighton Cliff? Uh, I think it was just Bright Cliff, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But, but yeah, I don't know. It's hard to really kind of... I don't feel like I got enough of the aspect of that, though. Um, like, I, like, I don't know the, why it happened before. And sure. Also in the house. I like the the characters so far. Meeting all these kids is a, a sad thing. But also, like, I I enjoy the differences of all the kids and the idea that they're, like, telling ghost stories and they're like, we have faced the scariest thing. It's not going to be easy to scare us, you know? And, like, when the idea is, like, well, we're all already heading towards death. Mm-hmm. Like, the threat of death isn't necessarily the scary thing either. Right. So, it's a very sad, but I'm interested to see what Mike Flanagan does with the story of it all, too. Because while he has had some stuff that has decent horror in it, it also has had some really interesting themes and stuff, too. Um, Hill House is one of the main ones, too, where they dealt with drug abuse, and they dealt with... Uh, uh, fears and uh, suicide and all kinds of stuff. And so. it was like hidden at first. Through, yeah, like sure. hidden things. You get distracted then... by the horror aspect and then like you really start seeing like some of the other ones too, especially when you don't know what to expect, right? Because yeah. I'm used to a lot of horror movies where it's like you're going into this more for a horror movie and Halloween, uh, maybe Nightmare on Elm Street maybe has some more hidden deeper themes and stuff too, but you know, Friday the 13th and some of the classic ones and stuff I feel like more so are a horror movie, and they mm-hmm. hit a lot of the typical tropes, and they don't have what Mike usually has been doing with the ones we've watched between the Hill Hauntings and Midnight Mass. Is they really touch on some interesting themes while wrapped up in a theme of horror, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, well, we should move on to the next one, because we got more to watch, and I'm excited for the month of October. Right? <sighs> Well, if you're excited more than Melanie, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the rest of Midnight Club we're going to be having coming out. And throughout Friday, all of October, you're going to be able to see some scary and or at least themed uh, Halloween type movies and stuff too. Including one that's going to have Melanie in it and I'm excited for that one because I'm going to be there for that.